Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Hey there. You are welcome to our little humble podcast here known as Growing in Grace. We're just a couple of guys thinking things out, and we hope that it will cause you to do the same and then come into a place where you realize the significance of what Jesus Christ accomplished for us at the cross. Uh, Growingingrace.org is where you'll find all of our archived programs. I'm Mike Kapler with Joel Brzezinski. Yo, good to be here with you. How's that? That was pretty good. Okay, I think we're done then. You were ready. Um, (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Speaking of being ready, last week I threw some questions out at you. They weren't really questions. They were just commonly held beliefs in much of Christianity. Uh, but you didn't know what statements I was going to make regarding those beliefs. And so we had some fun with that. And we're going to do the same thing this week, I guess, except in reverse, where you're going to throw out some commonly held I don't know if you want to call it Ideas, commonly held beliefs, thoughts, or, beliefs or theology yeah. or what. Yeah, we'll see uh, what we get. I mean, last week, <laughs> you only got two questions in on me, and we got maybe a little more time this week because we haven't um, spent as much time chatting in advance here. <laughs> but we'll, we'll see. <laughs> Let's just see how this goes. This, As always, this podcast is always spontaneous. We generally don't prepare stuff in advance. I mean, we, we may talk a little bit about what we're going to talk about. We have thoughts as we go about our own lives, and th- those obviously come into the podcast, but... Uh, in our own studies, you know, that comes yeah. up. But anyway. We, we create the headline first, and then we write an yeah, article. That's right. <laughs> audibly. Yeah. So, well, Gap, then, uh, got a few ideas jotted down here. How about this one? This idea, you know, we're singing a song in church, and it goes something like, or, or a, the pastor is praying, or somebody's praying, and they say, come, Lord Jesus, or come, Holy Spirit, we welcome your presence uh, that's a commonly heard and, and felt and done thing in church. Does that bring any thoughts to you? <laughs> Boy, does it ever. <laughs> um, and, and I want to be careful here because I, I know a, a lot of us do that sort of thing. And, and I wonder sometimes, Joel, if it's just because we, we don't know what else to say. You know, when you're praying in front of people especially, um, and, and maybe some do it in their own private time too. I, I don't know. It seems to happen more in a corporate setting. But uh, it, it can be a little nerve-wracking for people who aren't used to doing it. But even those who are praying in front of people on a regular basis always seem to fall back on that. And, and, and my question is, when we invite God to come, where is where was he at before that, <laughs> number one? Because we, we, we see in Scripture where Jesus said he, w- he would never leave us. He, he would never forsake us. Um, he lives in us. We are in him there's something inseparable going on here because Jesus Christ has become the the guarantee for us, the guarantee of a better covenant uh, than what Israel was under. So when I hear that, now I, I understand that sometimes people think, okay, I agree with everything you just said, Cap. Uh, that we understand that God is in us. We, we get that. But there's this corporate anointing that will sometimes fall on a place, and, and we, we call upon that in some sort of special way so that the, the manifestation of God's power can be present. And so so there's different thoughts from different people on, on these sorts of things. But to me, I don't like to do it because of what I was just getting around to. I believe that, that the scripture says we already have God's anointing. I, I don't have to and I used to do this, so I, I know what I'm talking about. I mean, I understand how people feel about it, but I've come to a, a different understanding of the gospel now. And it, just where I'm positioned at in my own mind, the scripture says we have an anointing. We have the, the holiness of God within us and have been described and identified as being holy and righteous. So there's really no reason to call upon God to show up. I think it's a waste of time. People mean well. God works through us in our ignorance all the time. But I think we need to become more aware of the fact that, uh, you see, God's zip code isn't in heaven anymore. He's relocated. 
I'm not saying that a place like heaven doesn't exist. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I'm just saying that uh, through his spirit, he has relocated to living within us. And there's really no reason to to call upon him to show up. Yeah, that's right. He's, he's come to live in us. First Corinthians uh, says that he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. You know, the spirit hasn't gone anywhere. He's always with us. Sometimes I think that we're looking for an emotional experience, and this isn't true of everybody. I'm not, you know, this is this is kind of a broad generalization, but I have experienced this myself, and I it seems that it's the case with other people. Look, we're looking for an emotional experience, thinking that that is God, not that God can't work in our emotions, not that good emotions aren't from God, but. Whether you have this big emotional experience in a church service or in a corporate setting or not, God is there. He hasn't gone anywhere. You know, I always ask the same question when people say that, you know, come Holy Spirit. Well, where was he? Was he up on the roof? Was he hiding behind the pew? Well, where was he? What was... No, he was with me the whole time. He was with us the whole time. And, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with looking for a manifestation uh, an outward manifestation of God. Uh, but sometimes we get so disappointed when we don't get that outward manifestation or that uh, emotional experience, and we think that God isn't there, and so we ask God to come. You know, we welcome his presence when he's been with us the whole time. Yeah, it's it's more likely to happen from the inside out instead right. of the other way around. Yeah, I think so. Okay. That took longer than what I thought. That's all right. Yeah, it's, good... it's hard to get more than two questions in, isn't it? Is. It is. <laughs> it's true. That's true. I shouldn't make fun of you anymore, but I will. <laughs> How about this? God, I give myself to you. Or when I gave my life to Christ, people uh, kind of have that sort of thought that I, I'm giving myself to Christ. Yeah, again, it, it's it's backwards thinking, Joel, and I'll, I'll try to make this a shorter answer than the last one because I, I felt like I was searching for the words. But it's the opposite of what has, has occurred, sort of like what we were just talking about to some extent and some of what we talked about in the last week or two. But that is that I didn't give my life to God. I probably have used that phrase many times over the years. When I when I committed my life to the Lord, when I gave my life to God, when I dedicated my life to him, however it's phrased, the fact is it's it's the complete opposite. God gave his life to us. I didn't give my life to him. He wasn't interested in me dedicating my life to him because my life, my so-called righteousness would have been considered like filthy rags, Isaiah said. And and so it's not about how I can commit as much of myself to him so much as it is that he gave his all to us. And that that's the short answer, but that's just the way it is. I mean, the life of God in us, he dedicated himself to us, not me dedicating myself to him. I think dedication is a wonderful thing, you know, being sin sincerely wanting to uh, pursue the, the, the goodness of God and, and to have that as, as a part of your life here on earth. That, that's a wonderful thing. But the fact is God killed us, placed us in the body of Christ at the cross and raised us up with him. New life, not our own, but his within. That's good. We died. That's the thing. God wasn't looking for us to give himself our life but it's just the opposite like you said if we died we no longer live but christ lives in us the life that we live is a matter of christ in us not us having offered ourselves to him now romans does have this thing you know it says offer yourself a living sacrifice well look at the wording there a living sacrifice it means we've been made alive with him and that's what we offer. It's not like we offered our old self and God said, oh, yes, yes, great, here, I'm glad you gave yourself to me. <laughs> it's not, nothing like that. Yeah, but He had no need for them, but we right. had need for him. Yeah, we had need for him, and so he made us a new creation. Well, let's see if we can, uh, with about three minutes left here or so, let's see if we can uh, get one more question in here. Which one of these? How about faith without works? is dead. You have enough time for this one. People think, well, <laughs> if you don't have works, then you obviously didn't have any faith, so you're not saved. I'll let you go with that one. Well, thanks, Joel. Appreciate that. <laughs> was, was that a soft curveball, or was that a... 
<laughs> well, no, out the park. not entirely. I think for, <laughs> for some people, it, it's just a matter of trying to come up with a way in which they can understand it because faith, faith without works is dead. We, we've often said that uh, works without faith is dead. Um, but that, that phrase that James used uh, in his epistle it, it, it look at the the context uh, surrounding it and and realize that he a couple of people that that he mentioned if i remember right it was it was abraham and rahab the harlot and it was declared that they were justified by works but the thing to keep in mind here with 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 those two those two examples it, it wasn't some sort of ongoing lifestyle that was being referenced it was in 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 abraham's case um, when, when he was going to sacrifice his son on the altar, it was it was one instance. And with Rahab, she opened a door to to let some people in. I mean, this this thing that we call faith without works is dead. What 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 is what that is established in is faith. <laughs> you you can't really have um, the the end of faith without Christ, and so. Uh, the bottom line on this, Joel, is knowing that we're going to be running out of time here, is that it, 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 James referenced single action by a uh, single action by Abraham and by Rahab, um, not just some sort of ongoing. Uh, if I'm not producing works, then I don't have faith. That that isn't what he was saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I think he was referencing too. What he was really leading to was faith that uh, the the response. That saves, you know, the, the response to what Christ has done. Uh, he was, I don't think that he was necessarily saying that, hey, we need to do some stuff, uh, you know, we need to prove our faith or that, you know, with faith, you'll you'll do something that'll prove yourself. I mean, I've thought that way in the past and I'm seeing more and more that he was really talking about a, the response of believing, not just saying that you believe, but really believing in your heart, like Paul had said in Romans, that God you know, ra that Jesus, God raised Jesus from the dead, that Jesus is Lord. Uh, anyway, uh, well, that's good. On the spot yeah, I mean, question. You can, you can believe the right theology. As, as Paul said in that passage, the demons also believe and tremble. Um, but, you, you know, I, I like what you were saying there, though. Is I mean, no matter, you can have all the right thinking, Joel, but but faith will bring a, a right response. Yeah, I think that's that's what it comes down to. Well, it's been a different couple weeks here on Growing in Grace. Uh, Cap and I uh, putting each other on the grill. And uh, <laughs> now really just having some fun in our casual style of conversation that we have each week here on Growing in Grace. Well, hey, coming up next week, have you ever tried to listen to an MP3 file in an 8-track tape player? <laughs> kind of silly. Uh, but many people do that with their Bible. No, not MP3s, but trying to do new covenant things the old covenant way not realizing the old has been made obsolete and the new is something totally new that can't operate the old way we'll talk about that mixing the covenants together next week right here on growing in grace this has been growing in grace with mike kapler and joel brzezicki Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.